I don't care. Let's see. Hey, I got a, I got a little whatever done yesterday because tonight I got to go and, uh, and uh, we got this unity thing. When I get dressed, I'll tell you all about it. So right now I'm not dressed, you see. It's like I got my friend's shirt on. See, it's on backwards. I like to put stuff on inside out. What's the tag? Say inside out, whatever. It's bigger for me because it's not, it's not mine. It's JB's. But I put on the hat so I can match the thing so I won't look too whatever it is. Okay. Um, so, oh, oh, I don't really drink. You know, I don't drink milk. However, you know, I could drink water, I guess. But I, got, I saw this milk in here. What's it? 1% low fat, artificial something. No, no artificial growth hormones. Vitamin A, D, B, B, one milk fat. I don't know. I wouldn't do milk anyway. If I had my drugs, I'd just get some uh, goat's milk, whatever. But I'm going to try this, right? But here's what, but here's what I'm going to do. I'll put a little bit of that in there because I'm not drinking a lot of milk, right? I'll put that like that. Then I will do, hey, doggies. Little doggy there. Uh, put you over there. But then I go to those Pennsylvania people. Hershey. Grew up with this stuff, right? And I'll load this up here. What do I care? You know, I load this up here in this hair. Da, 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 da. Why? Because I love me some chocolate. Yeah. Then, just like a little kitty. I'm at JB's house, you know, and so uh, I'm very fortunate because I get, when I get to the States, I have like three different realities. So JB's here in St. Louis and big, whatever it's, I don't know what I'll call it, state big house, you know, got the big back yet, whatever, got stuff. Take the doggy out for a walk every, every morning. No, not this doggy, the other doggy. Um, in the morning, get my little morning exercise for about an hour, listen to a podcast on the thing. It's like, okay, great. See, made it chocolate. So it's one reality. Then when I'm in New York, this, that's the really reality. With my, uh, with my fraternity brother, you know, he's a big time, uh, you know, university professor. Well, JB is like a retired lawyer, but he does a lot of stuff. He sits on boards and stuff like that. He has a really good, I'll interview him one of these days. Maybe when I come back, Maybe I get now. I don't have time this this time. When I come back, I interview him. Oh. And um, it'll probably be uh, on what he's doing. He got this thing. They they, they provide pianos for uh, for kids in the St. Louis area. You know, including like Fer it's the Ferguson area where you hear about like that. It's a good initiative. And of course, when I'm in Virginia, I. Uh, I'm with my sister, says that's a good thing. But what ties all these people together? They're all hoarders. They don't, they don't think like they're not. But don't worry about it. But it basically means my sister has all this, like all, you know, she has birth certificates, uh, what do you call that? Baptismal certificates. Yeah, everything the family has for all, our, all the brothers and sisters. You know, she got everybody. You know, in fact, my, we just found my brother after 30 years. So he's, he's down there now. I'm, I'm anxious, I'm not anxious, but I'm really happy I'm going to see him like on Wednesday when I get back to Virginia, because that's going to be great. Anyway, so she has that stuff. In New York, <laughs> buddy has, he has so many African outfits. And Africa, you go into his apartment, it's, it's co-op, but it's going to the apartment. It's like, going, it is, it's going into a museum. I mean, an African museum, because he's like Pan-African, she's like Egypt, you know, all over Africa, that kind of thing. Anyway. So that's a whole other reality. And JB has all my writing. I put a lot of other stuff like, I don't know, three, five, 29 households. But one of the things he found, because one of my writings, yeah, well, I don't know, is, is this. This is the outsider. This is the script for the outsider that I did. I've done a lot of audio dramas in my life. I remember I'm a stage, I'm a trained stage manager. So one of the things you have a prompt book when you're a stage manager. Now for you, those you people in, and I guess in uh, in film or, or or TV. I know when I worked for the Sopranos, you know, all the directors always had their prompt books. You know, I call them prompt books. I don't know what y'all call them and those kind of things. But the prompt books, it looks something like this. So you see, you have all these, you know, you have all these tabs and stuff like that. And you know, it's each scene you have a breakdown each 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 page as a I still can't see it, but I'm doing it like that. You know, you have all the scenes break down like just the cast list and all that stuff. Then like each like what is this? Uh let me take these glasses off. I can't see what I'm doing here. This is uh 
Oh, Lionel Holmes. This is just because I this this particular play. This is a huge thing because it was a it was an audio drama I did. It was a live uh, adapted from Richard Wright's *The Outsider*, and but also his first book they did called uh, *Lord Today*. And I put them both together and we got adapted it. And um, so anyway, so this is the prompt book, and I did it all myself. When I said, yeah, I adapted it myself, I put everything together. There's a there's a picture exists someplace with me with all the scripts. I produced just everything. Everything was done. To, this, is, this is like my graduation project to myself. You know, I have these like things that I do, you know. Back then, this is before I became an arts director. Then I used to do these audio topics. And like one I did, uh, The Long Dream, which which was with the, the group, the core group that I work with called Creative Unity. It was four of them. So the long dream is about the coming of ages for black kids in Mississippi. And uh, and so, anyway, so, so, so because it's that, uh, uh, that was like a graduation project, project to create unity to that, to that, to that group, right? Uh, for this was a graduation project to myself, for my own like growth as an audio dramatist. And I did a whole other one when, I, when we finally uh, did... Um, when we when when I st when I started doing stuff with the whole station, we did we did palm oil drinker. Uh, Amos told us palm oil drinking, and that was like a whole other initiation into a whole other realm for me. Audio drama that was special, but this is a thing that JB found in my thing. So so I'm really happy that I found that. So I'm telling you all this stuff because I've been extremely fortunate, and and I, I call this my grateful time because uh, this is the time when uh, I guess what am I saying. Like this is like Thanksgiving. I know American Indians, blah blah blah, stuff and all this stuff. You know, but you know, there are a lot of things that happen in this trip. I feel incredibly grateful for. For uh, and and one of the things is that this is I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast because I because you know he has the long ones and he's just talking to one person. And that's really the best way to do it. You know, this whole thing with these talk shows where they have the power here. You know, six whatever people on the panel, and they they snipe it at one guest or whatever they whatever they're doing. It's a terrible form of communication. But Joe, he's talking to one person live there in the studio. Forget this, you know, Skyping or whatever y'all doing. That's like terrible. I mean, uh, even when I'm when I'm talking, I'm talking. I, I like to make like I'm talking to one person. But also when I do my interviews, is like it's best. I love interviews. This whole talking to uh, talking out to whatever I'm doing. These, these are. These rants, you know, they're fine, they're dandy, but the thing I like best is just interviewing people. That's, I really love interviewing people. Um, but one thing that was said very, um, that I really appreciate is, um, I don't have many views and everything that, because I told you all before, this is, when I'm doing these things, these are like um, um, memoirs that I'm writing to myself like that. When I interview or something else, these are memoirs um, that also I do the ADOS thing. Um, but one person who commented to my ADUS, she says uh, something like, you know, I was, uh, uh, she says something about uh, uh, of all the internet people, whatever it is, that, that I was, uh, I have to get, I have to talk about that some other time, but something like I was, I was the kindest or something like that. It was a very complimentary thing. And I really appreciate that because one of the things you have to do when you're doing these kind of things, I believe, is it's not about so much about authenticity. You are who you are because the, mic the microphone doesn't lie. Okay, just like the stage don't lie, you know that the the, 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 the the camera doesn't lie. Well, whenever you turn on the camera, you, you're acting anyway. I mean, you just have to not you're, you're not really yourself. But if you're doing this stuff, this kind of stuff, you have to be so authentic that you you really deep in, dig and deep into you. And, and what comes out is, is authentic. So I like to prefer if, if, if this person who wrote, I think it was a female, he says that um, uh, I was one of the nicest or the most pleasant, something like that on, on, on the internet. I like to think that's because that's the essence of me and I'm just sort of magnifying my essence out there, reaching out and uh, making people feel good. So I see what I say that, that everybody, uh, you know, in your in yourself, I mean, it's, instead of getting on these, 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 uh, Instagrams and Twitter. I don't do those things. I don't know what I'm really talking about with that. The, the, the Twitters and the fake page. Instead of really trying to take on a persona and, 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 and sniping people. I mean, it, okay, you're right. That's 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 like entertainment for some people. You know what I mean? I do. I mean, I like the entertainment, right? But I think one of the things that has to be done is um, you have to, uh, you know, try 
there's, there's a new movie coming out with uh, Mr. Rogers kind of neighborhood thing. I never really got into because I was a little older when that thing happened. But but you know, he said just be kind. You know, just 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 be kind. Be the kindest person you can be, and then you'll attract kindness, kindness or whatever have you. But there's something that happened I saw last night. This is so funny. First of all, Breaking Brown. You know, we have a new book that's going to be. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say it here. I'm doing an AUS name, but a caller called in to the event. Bad move. <laughs> It was, I'm oh, sorry, I'm oh, sorry. This is funny to me. I just wanted to record it. I I, I'll, I'll say this in my first. But this, it, it obviously sound like an older gentleman. I say gentleman, and I use that term loosely, right? Because he went in and started doing some, some super things. But event handler, where she handled it, because, you, know, you know, everybody's, oh, you did that, 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 you a liar, blah, 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 well, he was, but I mean, the point is, like that, then the court of lady, yeah, that old man, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something I've said in other, uh, in another, another space like this. Like I said, I'm extremely fortunate because now that in my older age, I'm, I'm with other people, I'm with people that, that I knew for a long time, like, you know, just to be here at JB's house and, and like that. It's like a, a privilege. It's, 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 a, it's wonderful, you know? Um, but one of the people, and, and, and I love JB d d d deeply as, as well as I love my brother when I go see him like that, and, and, uh, and, and James Conyer in New York, and these people I really love. They have an older relationship, and we really, really love them. Uh, one of the persons that I really wish I could run into is uh, Darren Holmes Clark. He gave me one of the best advice I ever had in my life, especially when I became arts director for WBA Radio. And I, I try to pass it on as much as I can. It is this. When you, re when you, when you, when you engage, with, when you encounter someone that is acting, say, out of character, or, or, that's not be, being rude or whatever have you, then you have to look at them and basically, you say, like, say, for instance, this old gentleman that was, that was, and I use the word loosely again, and they were calling that last night. I didn't laugh because it's funny to me. Uh, uh, he, let's say he's, say, say, say he was 65 years old. Let's make he was 66. That's better. Yeah, say he's 66 years old, right? And uh, he's talking his nonsense, right? Well, pay attention, doggy. This is good for you. He's, uh, and, and he's saying what he's saying, right? Well, at that moment, it, you know, what I would do is I would adjust myself. Oh, he's 66. He sounds like he's 66. Six and six is 12. One and two is three. This is what Theron told me. He says, no one is over nine years old. So when somebody is 66 and doing something like that, you go to the lowest, you know, the single digit number, which would be three. They say, that person's acting like a three-year-old. So in your brain, you don't say to him, you don't say, you're acting like a three-year-old. You just say, oh, I know how to, I know what this is. This is a three-year-old acting out. They can, they don't have any arguments. They just, they just spewing out what they heard someplace else. You know, they're saying, you know, oh, you're, you're blah, 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 blah. You're being paid. These talking points to get some, some, someplace else, right? And you say, that's the way a three-year-old would handle things. It's not the way a 66-year-old person would handle things. 66-year-old, like, you know, they would, you know, they would, they would, they would have evidence or something like that. So, so, so when I hear people like that, I said, ah, that's just a 66 year old. Somebody could be 34, you know, we say, ah, oh, that's a 70, seven, a seven year old acting, 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 acting like a seven year old. But when they act their age, they act their age. But if they're acting stupid, then you just put it to, to the single digit and say, that's what it is. And in your brain, it, it, it helps you. That way you don't get upset. You don't get all, you know, uh, what do you say, you know, hyper and, and anxiety prone. <laughs> And stress, right? So I just wanted to I'll pass it over here because I'm so happy that that uh, JB has my writings. That uh, that 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 then when I'm in New York, I can do what I do there, and when I'm when I'm when I'm in Virginia, I can relax that way. So that's it for me for now. As I prepare for this day later on tonight for this big old affair here in St. Louis, so, so I'll tell you about it whenever I whenever I can tell you about it later on tonight. So thank you for listening. Take care. A little message from me, T, one of the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect about real life, real life people, and the fortunate things that should be happening in your life right now.